Cotton. I have to say I'm amused by the title of today's hearing, the Supreme Court's shadow docket, as if these cases are happening in some dark, shadowy, nefarious place in the Supreme Court building where the justices are doing something illicit, like maybe actually reading the Constitution of the United States. Let's look at some of the cases that have resulted in this shadow docket in recent years, cases where you have radical judges, usually in places like Hawaii or Seattle or San Francisco, where a single radical judge issues some nationwide injunction to prevent the former administration from building a wall to secure our southern border from the millions of illegal migrants who have poured across it this year, or maybe blocking travel from countries that are rife with terrorists and have no way to vet those travelers. I don't know what else they did in the Trump administration. Maybe some judge in the Ninth Circuit ordered Donald Trump to bring Qasem Soleimani back to life and to apologize for killing Iran's terrorist mastermind. Or look at some of the cases on the shadow docket in which you had radical governors in places like Nevada and California who would block Christians from going to church to worship God while they allowed liquor stores, marijuana shops, and casinos to stay open. Now, I'm not saying those things should have been closed. I'm saying they all should have been open to include churches where people of faith could go worship. And now, look what liberals want to happen on the shadow docket. They want the Supreme Court to enjoin cases in which the lawyers in the lawsuit can't even find a proper defendant to be sued. So, I know our Democratic friends think this shadow docket is something extraordinary and novel and unprecedented. Maybe it's the case that the lawsuits are so frivolous that they don't even merit an oral argument and full briefing. Or maybe it, this entire hearing is distract from the radical law that just passed the House of Representatives last week, the most extreme pro-abortion measure to ever pass the Congress. Now, the Democrats over there, all but one of whom voted for it, argue that this bill merely, merely codifies Roe v. Wade. Oh, would that that were so. Roe v. Wade, though wrongly decided, at least acknowledged at least acknowledge our people's legitimate abiding interest to protect innocent life before a child is born. The law that passed in the House of Representatives though last week allows abortion to occur up until the very moment of birth, 40 weeks or even beyond, displaying a grotesque indifference to the most vulnerable kinds of human life. I remember when my son was in the NICU, it was adorned with photos on the wall matching, on the one hand, a small child that had been born at 30 weeks or 28 weeks or even 23 weeks, sometimes so small it was held in the palm of a doctor, to the picture of that child at age five or seven or 11 riding a bike performing in a ballet, running through a field of flowers, all of whom would have been subject to the most grotesque and abusive kinds of abortions under the bill the House of Representatives just passed. The Democrats have come a very long way on the question of abortion. All you have to do is look at Bill and Hillary Clinton's position on the question to see how radical they have become. Bill and Hillary Clinton, Hillary as recently as 2008 in her failed presidential campaign, said that abortion should be safe, legal, and rare. Not many Democrats would say that today. Ms. Howard, would you agree with Bill and Hillary Clinton that abor abortion should be safe, legal, and rare? I would think that there's a lot of options that we could put in place that would uh, limit the need for abortion in terms of supporting health care for women, uh, access to contraceptives, uh, making sure that they have insurance coverage or, or Medicaid coverage. Uh, there are many things that we could do that would give them more of a choice in their own, uh, how, they, how they have health care uh, so that uh, they don't necessarily have an unwanted pregnancy. But when they do have one, I think they have a right to make the decision about whether or not they want to continue that pregnancy. 
Ms. Howard, my question was simple. Do you agree with Bill and Hillary Clinton that abortion should be safe and legal and rare? And your unwillingness to say yes just demonstrates my point, case closed, that, abort, uh, that Democrats today will not concede what Bill and Hillary Clinton conceded, that abortion should be rare, because it implies that there is something wrong about the practice, that there is something wrong about ending an unborn life up to the point of birth at 40 weeks, it is wrong and the Democrats will no longer recognize that it is wrong.